it's a great pleasure to welcome back to What's Next, Michael Jordan, who is Bank Zero co-founder and of course our first guest all the way back in 2020. And I remember asking you at the time about Bank Zero and it was all in the planning stages. You've been planning this for many years. Well, it's now up and running and uh, welcome back, Michael Jordan. Oh, very well, Aki. I've just come back from Barcelona. I was exposed to the Mobile World Congress, and it is just amazing how technology is changing the world. And it's a rush, hey? We just can't afford to fall behind. Well, Barcelona, Spain, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Been there many times, and uh, I'm so glad that you went to Mobile World Congress. What were your reflections on uh, MWC? Look, I went as a guest of RAIN, so I was obviously very interested in what's happening in the 5G space, and it's accelerating very fast. It's certainly one of the dominant trends of the industry, better equipment, better antennas, faster and faster data. You know, data consumption will just keep on growing at about 60% a year, so I spent some time there. And then, you know, I have this love for startups, and there were uh, entire halls dedicated to startups. And even if only 10% of those that I was exposed to survive and, and uh, offer their services in the next five years, then there's an incredibly exciting future waiting for us. Everything from health to what AI can do for you to just making life easier and more convenient. So the future is being developed. And uh, I want to be on the side that, that is grasping the opportunities and seeing the world not just as one that has problems, but one where you can have sustainable solutions that are started by businesses and startups. Very exciting. It's actually quite fascinating, Michael, on how fintech has grown. I mean, when you look at the continent, I was just recently last year in Dubai attending the JITEX conference, and you look at 300 million uh, African internet customers will be coming online for the first time in the next two years. So there's tremendous growth opportunities on the continent. And, you know, innovation opportunities, I imagine, are going to be plentiful. Yes, uh, Aki, if there's one thing that is changing Africa more than anything, more than the politicians and the organizations, it's mobile. And I think the world is increasingly going to be divided between people who are connected and who aren't connected. And in fact, you don't stand a chance in the modern world if you're not connected to the internet. Um, imagine if you're a small farmer and you don't know what your prices are doing, or you're a fisherman and you don't know, you know where to go and fish. Um, you, you're a child and you want to be educated, but you don't have access to the free content that the internet allows. So it's a democratizing influence, the mobile, but it's also revolutionary in how it's changing industry after industry. And of course, that does include fintech. Let's talk about... Bank Zero. I mean, digital banking is rapidly increasing in popularity locally. I mean, we've seen lots of new banks coming in and really banking being simplified. And certainly from a South Africa point of view, we've certainly set a benchmark globally when it comes to digital banking. Now, with this in mind, what sets digital first banks like Bank Zero apart from traditional banks who also offer this online banking service and you know other kinds of services, but what differentiates a bank like Bank Zero? Yeah, we, um, we're entering a world of sophisticated competition. And it's uh, true that all the traditional banks also have digital offerings. But there are two things that set apart these neo banks or, or, or these challenger banks. And the first one is a radically lower cost structure. You know, when you don't need to have the head offices and all the branch infrastructure and the old systems, that means your cost structure is... Well, I'll, I'll put a figure out there, 1% of that of a traditional bank. And then the second thing that is different is that when you launch as a mobile first bank, you can use all the features that a mobile phone has to the fullest. And, and that would be location services. It would be things like facial recognition. But it would also be rethinking all the functionality that you can with a completely new system um, that doesn't have the, the baggage of, of the old system. So... Far lower cost structure and completely new functionality. One of Bank Zero's biggest selling points is that all transactions are absolutely free. Now, how can Bank Zero offer such a cheap service when other banks are charging their customers to do these kind of things? And how do you make money if you're giving it away for free? So, Aki, that's the question I get asked whenever I'm at a bride. My mates want to know that too. Well, the first one is the low cost structure. And how do you get such a low cost structure? You use open source, but proven technology. 
you do all your development in-house, so you don't pay high fees to consultants or other people. Even the founders in Bank Zero are not paying themselves a salary. That helps. Um, and But the main thing is that there's no legacy cost structure. Um, so you have a very, very low uh, cost base. And then you use other sources of revenue. So the, the big source of revenue for Bank Zero is the difference between wholesale and retail interest rates. Um, so the margin, just that margin is adequate. There are other income streams like interchange on payments um, or when people buy, let's say, airtime or data or electricity. Um, and, but the, the key to all of this is just you've got to have a low cost structure. You can't have massive um, head office buildings and art collections and wine collections, the things that traditional banks uh, do. Uh, I know about that. Um, but a, but a, a tiny cost structure allows you to give the benefits to consumers. So, and, and that's the reason why m most services on the internet today are actually free. Michael, you look at this digitization that has taken place and you look at the impact that the cloud has had on business, for example. Ha have, have digital uh, transformation services like the cloud, for example, help reduce costs and disrupt banking? Yeah, so okay, we, we have some services on the cloud, um, you know, from, from the HR and the administration services. And in others, and so, some of the banking, we've actually also chosen to have a new form of mainframe, believe it or not. Um, and that was for purposes, but also for security purposes. We partnered with IBM there. So it's, it's, it, it, I think there are different versions of the cloud available today um, because so much of what we did was our own development and and because we are so focused on cybersecurity, we've adopted this hybrid approach and it's serving us very well. It is allowing us to come with free banking services. Prospective Bank Zero customers may be concerned that there are no bank branches, for example. So traditionally, a bank has got its bricks and mortar, even though it's depleting quite rapidly around the country. But Bank Zero doesn't have any branches. So how are customers going to open a bank account, for example? How does it make signing up a new customer easy? even those people who aren't very good with technology. Yes, you're quite right. If you don't have bank branches, you've got to make sure that you make it easy and intuitive for customers to sign up. We've done that on the app, and we've done that not only for individuals, um, but also for businesses. And the entire process takes only about five minutes, and we think that's a worthwhile time to spend to avail yourself of uh, you know, no bank fees. It even makes sense to then have it as a second account. You know, we're not telling customers, you know, switch everything to us right now. Why don't you open it up, experience zero banking. It only takes five minutes. Um, the way we've done it, of course, um, we've made this sign up so easy is by having electronic interfaces wherever it's possible. Um, so, and we do that for business accounts as well. So it's easy, it's intuitive. And if you think about it, let's say Google or Facebook, they don't need to have branches because it's easy to work with them. And that's exactly the way one should think about banking. I see that Bank Zero also offers business accounts. Now, what kind of unique features do these accounts offer to South African organizations? Yes, actually, it's a differentiating feature of Bank Zero is that we feel the business segment in South Africa is neglected um, from a fee perspective, um, but also in terms of functionality. Businesses still need to go into branches when they want to make changes to their mandates, for example. And again, we were able to think mobile first here. So it's all businesses except very large listed companies uh, can use the Bank Zero services. The functionality um, caters for that. Um, for a big example would be mandates. We have different tiers of, of people who can approve different levels of transactions. But the account opening process is also on the app. Right now it's available for Android and very soon it will be for iOS as well. Um, and we think that there are billions and billions of rands that South African businesses can save by moving over to Bank Zero. So in that sense, um, particularly after COVID where businesses have suffered, it's nice to bring something like that to the market that um, can save businesses money and therefore make them more efficient and in some cases help them survive. Michael, you've been in banking for a long time. You follow business trends. What kind of trends have you noticed in the local banking industry since Bank Zero has been launched? Well, I think there has definitely been a downtrend in fees. I think banks have realized that they can't keep up this kind of um, ever-increasing inflationary increases on already high fees. So the fee landscape has become competitive. 
particularly in the individual market, but not so much in the business market. So businesses are still overpaying. We see that as a competitive opportunity. Um, and the other one, and I say this somewhat tongue in cheek, we've also seen advertising campaigns uh, using the word zero from more than one competitor. We, of course, love that uh, because we think they, they're giving us uh, exposure. So the, the competitive intensity is definitely increasing, and that's a great thing. And this is the thing about startups entering um, you know, it brings great benefits to consumers. So ultimately, consumers will be the victor because fees will come down and functionality will keep on getting better and better. What are the kind of mistakes that you see South Africans making when it comes to personal budgets and money management? And certainly when you look at us as a nation, yeah. uh, I don't think that we manage our money strategically very well. Well, that's a sense you get when you look at the, the, the savings and how much South Africans actually save. And the reality is that there are tough times as well, but savings must be a big issue for South Africa. What, what kind of trends are you seeing? Uh, Saki, you've, you've uh, hit the nail on the head. We don't save enough. We don't save enough as a nation. That means that um, uh, people live from paycheck to paycheck or from social grant to social grant. And usually uh, the money runs out be before that next money hits their account. Now, we too as Bank Zero can make a difference there, at a, first of all, by not charging fees. So you save money by not having fees on your account. But secondly, when you open a check account with Bank Zero, we automatically also open a savings account for you. It's obviously also free. You get to name it, whatever you want to, whatever your dream is. It can be a holiday or an education. Put a picture there. And we find the behavior of our customers is once they've opened the savings account, we actually see that their savings behavior has changed. So that, that's a very important um, aspect of banking. We, we think there's a lot of competition when it comes to lending. Um, that's not an area where we as Bank Sierra feel we can make a difference, but we certainly hope to make a difference by changing the savings behavior of South Africans and make them less dependent on just that next bit of cash flow coming next month that they also look after themselves by saving. Well, talking about saving, how competitive are Bank Zero's interest rates for those people who do actually save money? Yeah, we, we're in the market. Uh, okay, it's not one where we try and lead in the headline price. Th those are competitive market-related interest rates. Um, the, the more compelling thing is how easy we make it to transfer money from your normal account to the savings account, to, to work for a goal, to actually see we gamify it. There's a bar at the bottom um, of, of the block on your phone where you can see how close you are getting to your target. Um, so we try and make banking fun as well. My kids uh, all have different saving goals. And, and I can see um, how they enjoy getting closer and closer to their targets. Michael, talk to me about transacting with Bank Zero. Does it work in the same way as a traditional bank? Uh, and I'm thinking about credit card machines. Do you have your own credit card machines? Uh, when you look at how we transacting every day, I imagine the things are pretty much the same with Bank Zero. Um, okay, so what we're trying to do is focus uh, razor sharp on the areas where we can make a difference. Um, what we're not going to do is lending ourselves, but we're going to partner with people who want to lend to our customers or investments, let's say equity investment, or these point of sale devices, there too we, we would like to partner. So yes, of course, you can use the Bank Zero account, but you know, the point of sale devices will be then available from a third party or from other banks. So it all works as before. The major thing is, and startups need to focus, is we want to make transactional banking free. So as long as you do electronic banking with an individual or your business customer at Bank Sierra, that's going to be the thing that we focus on. How do you expect the South African banking industry to evolve in the months and years ahead? I imagine that uh, it's going to be some very interesting times coming up because you've got like disruptors such as yourself coming in and really setting a new standard in the industry. Yes, okay. so I think the pressure on fees will continue, um, which obviously will necessitate cost management disciplines within banks. So, you know, I expect to see um, that strong downward pressure by bank management on costs to accommodate this type of fee pressure. A lot obviously depends on customers. Um, you know, they can't just sit at their banks and wait for this to happen. It's only if customers start shopping around um, and exhibit switching behavior that banks will be forced to actually come to the party. At the same time, what will happen in the industry is a lot more automation because banks typically have over the years developed very many manual processes. So automation will take investment in IT. And at the same time, um, there will be new features launched. I mean, 
Bank Zero has 16 features that we think are completely differentiated. We haven't seen them in the market. So banks will have to catch up and also invest in new technology. So those are the twin forces, the one cost reduction, but at the same time investment in technology. Does Bank Zero have any cool new products or services in the pipeline that you can talk to us about today? Um, Aki, there, there's some basics we still want to do. The one is account opening over iOS. As I said, it's there for Android, but if businesses want to open an account um, on, on their Apple devices, that'll come pretty soon. We're listening very carefully to what customers are telling us. Um, and for example, they, they want to make payments to SARS and they want to do that in an easy way. You know, that's something that, that we're going to bring online. But I think the big thing that is waiting for Bank Zero is, is our marketing engine hasn't been switched on yet. So we focused everything on the product, uh, bringing to market something with you know, lots of new functionality, with ease uh, and with zero fees. But um, apart from talking um, to people like you now, we haven't done any marketing. So the big thing that's going to happen in the rest of the year is we're going to start telling people about what cool things Bank Zero has to offer. It's quite interesting. I imagine with you as well. I noticed that how I start paying with things when I go out and how I transact has changed dramatically. You know, with these tap to go services, um, I'm now using, you know, Apple Pay. Um, and, and there are so many similar uh, vendors that are offering the same kind of solutions. And I imagine that you've seen these trends on how people pay. You know, you never take out your wallet anymore. In fact, I hardly carry my wallet around. But tap to pay, uh, does Bank Zero have that functionality? And what about Apple Pay? Is that something that we could see down the line possibly? So, so we're very proud of the Bank Zero card and the card itself offers, you know, tap and, and go functionality also with uh, control over your phone. So it's not Apple Pay as you uh, scheduled it, but it is the tap functionality. And um, one of the nice things about this card is that you don't have to change your subscriptions every time you change the card. You know, so one thing that irritated me is having to update my details on Uber or the App Store or, you know, any of the services that they use. And that's something that we've patented because it uses a different number um, for what's printed on the card as, as on your Mac strip and on your chip. Um, so there at least we can save you a lot of hassle. But actually the big thing is still getting um, South Africans out of cash. And when you go on a trip to China, for example, it's very, very difficult to even use your credit card outside of the hotel. So we also offer QR payment functionality, which um, comes at a much lower cost to the merchant than using QRs that's based on card interchange. So lots of new functionality out there. Get away from cash. In that instance, if you use QR, you can also get away from cards and do so at a lower cost. And now it's just all about getting this into the market and helping South African consumers and businesses save on bank fees. Time for bank fees, high bank fees is over. Michael, I love that feature that you that you mentioned just a second ago, that you never have to change your your card number, right? And and it's a great deal of frustration. Every time I get a new card, I've got to log into my Netflix account and my Spotify account, and I've got to change all my credit card details. This is something that is a South African first for Bank Zero, that you've patented this technology, and I, as a customer, would never have to change those yeah. details on those vendors like Spotify again. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's it's a world first. Um, and, you know, Aki, this comes from developing software yourself because you go back to first principles. You know, we inquired of MasterCard. He said, but you don't just have one card number. You have three. Can we use them differently? And they said, that's a very interesting question. No one's asked us that. But, yes, of course, you can use them differently. So um, it, you can have a different number on the mag strike to the one printed on the card to the one in your chip. And the way that we've put it to use is exactly as you've picked up now, that even if you change your physical card, you can still keep your electronic card number as you've entered it in all these services, because it's a massive hassle to change them across all your apps and all your shopping and everything that you do. And now you don't have to do that. And there's still adequate security that we've got by the control that you have on the app. Cybersecurity is a massive issue. And you look at it globally and you look at the global threats that uh, cybersecurity poses right now. It's right up there. Um, everybody's talking about it from the World Economic Forum to any kind of research that's coming out. They're saying the biggest threat 
globally right now, and I guess the, the situation in Russia will be right there as well. But cybersecurity is right there. That, what, what's your take at Bank Zero on it? How secure is the platform? No, it's, it's possibly one of the biggest risks um, of our times. I, I think the, the one right now is we could still have the Ukraine conflict spiral out of control. So I think you've got to say the possibility of World War Three and nuclear um, should worry us a lot. But after that, it's cybersecurity. Now, one of the advantages of how the business model of Bank Zero is that we don't have all these multiple channels. You don't have branches and call centers and ATMs and speed point devices or even internet banking. You only have this app. So by reducing it to the app only, that, that is already taking it down a bit. Then adding, as I said to you, location. We know where the customer is and you have the um, biometric type of security on top of that. That reduces the risk in itself significantly already. And then the fact that, you know, we own all our software ourselves, it's written by ourselves, it's been tested, it does have insurance. So it, right at the start, when we started designing Bank Zero, we took cybersecurity very seriously because it is this massive risk. Um, and, and, and it's a risk that can affect traditional banks as it can new banks. And it's just something that, that we have to protect our customers against. Michael, you've always been an optimistic person as long as I've known you. But when you look at this uh, situation and the war that's happening in the Ukraine and uh, how Russia has sparked so many geopolitical issues globally, uh, it's going to no doubt affect us. I mean, just the price of fuel, for example, is going to have an impact on us, even though this is so far away. So geopolitically, the impact that this could have on South Africa is quite concerning. Uh, what's your take on what's going on globally at the moment? Yeah, you know, okay, I'm obviously very worried. Um, you know, we've had a long era without wars, uh, major wars in the world, and we've kind of come to take it for granted. And suddenly to see a sovereign state being invaded by a very large military power, this is upsetting all the apple carts. It's upsetting one could argue the democratic and liberal world order. Um, and it, it's quite historic. And, and the thing now um, for Putin is, of course, he's uh, playing a war of escalation. He's not just suddenly going to draw back his troops. And this type of escalation can get very, very dangerous. Um, for South Africa, um, you know, we fortunately we're below the equator. So if this, God forbid, ever were to result in, in nuclear wars, you really want to be in the South. I mean, in that sense, it's positive, but it'll still be catastrophic for the world. On a more immediate basis, uh, we see the price of all commodities going up, oil and other commodities, which will lead to more inflation, which will then lead to higher interest rates. And that's exactly what, you know, we don't want. We need economic growth in the country. And then on a very immediate level, um, up to 30% of South Africa's wheat is imported from the Ukraine. So something as basic as bread and bread prices will be affected by this conflict. So one can only hope that um, that some form of sensibility will prevail. Um, at this stage, it, it actually even looks like the Ukrainians are able to defend their country quite well. And if they can just um, do that at some stage and, you know, let's hope really drive away the invaders, uh, that's the best scenario we can hope for. Final question, Michael. What about expansion into the rest of Africa? Is this something that's on the cards for Bank Zero? Um, uh, we have very big dreams, you know, we ultimately want to conquer the world, but first you've got to win your home matches. First, we've got to get South Africa right properly. We've got to focus. Um, we're a small team. We're highly, highly focused. Um, they have their arms full with projects and priorities. So um, we'll get there one day, but first uh, we want to make an impact in South Africa. Michael Jordan. Bank Zero co-founder, always such a pleasure hearing your insights and your thinking. Michael, thank you once again for your time and wishing you all the very best with Bank Zero and uh, you know all the other investments that you've been making on 5G and rain, etc. Uh, it's great to watch your progress and uh, I'm going to be watching Bank Zero very, very carefully. Michael Jordan, thank you for your time. Thank you, Aki. Always fun speaking to you. Thanks for having me.